Hi guys and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to look at a common docker image problem, how to troubleshoot and how to fix it. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the Unraid Docker image and troubleshooting problems with it. We're going to have a look at how to expand the Docker image, which we may need to do from time to time if we install a lot of containers. But also, we'll look at a common mistake that people can make when mapping Docker volumes to the Unraid array. When this happens, it can cause the Docker image to fill up and then cause an error. So to make it easy, we'll be looking at a script which will show us just where the problem lies and then how to use that info to fix the problem. Okay, so people new to Unraid who haven't used Docker before sometimes can have problems with the Docker image. Now, if I click onto settings here and go to Docker, if I toggle across to the advanced view here, then I can see here the size of my Docker image is 20 gigs and I've used around six gigs of that. Now this Docker image stores all of the Docker containers that you download that's not including the app data and other things that are mapped to the main array. Now, if I stop the Docker service here, with the Docker service stopped, I can confirm that the Docker image is 20 gigs. Now you can increase the size of the Docker image easily just by typing in the new size here. So should your Docker image start filling up because you've downloaded a whole bunch of containers, then you can increase the size of it here. And so now starting back up the Docker service, we can confirm here that the size is 25 gigs. And of course, I haven't used up any more space because I've got no more containers. That's still around the six gig mark. Now, sometimes people will find that their Docker image starts growing in size and they're not sure why. And so if we go across to the Docker tab here, and here we can see a few containers on this server. Now, when you set up a Docker container, we map volumes from inside the container to outside the container to shares on our server. So here you can see that this path here forward slash data, this is the location that the container sees and it's mapped on the server to the share downloads, which we can see here. Now I'm going to start up this container and I'm going to open up a console window into it. Okay, so this terminal window is in the file system of the NCB get container. And I can see here my location is in a folder forward slash opt. So I'm going to go up a directory from here and then I'm going to list the files and folders. And we can see here, these are all the folders that make up the directories inside the container. And we can see the folder here, data. This is the one that's mapped here, which goes to the Unray download share. And if I change directory into that, so into CD forward slash data and list the files and folders there, I've got two folders, one torrents and one Usenet. So if I go to the Unraid shares and I look inside the downloads, we can see those two folders there, torrents and Usenet, because the location data is just forwarded a bit like post redirect when you move house to this location here. So as far as the container is concerned, NCB get, it doesn't actually know that this location here is somewhere on the server. It just thinks it's local inside this location here. Now, if we go back up a directory again, and list out the files, we can see there is a folder here called downloads, but this folder downloads is not mapped to anywhere on the Unraid server. And because this location isn't mapped to anywhere else on the server, then any files put here will be inside the actual Docker container itself, therefore inside the Docker image or a Docker volume. And this will expand the size of your Docker image on the Unraid server if things were downloaded into that location. So when NCB get is downloading things, we want it to download into this location here, the forward slash data, because that's the volume on the server, which contains all my downloads. So if I open up NCB get here and go to its web UI, now if I go to settings here and I go to paths, well, the main directory where it wants to download things is in forward slash downloads. And so if I leave the location like that here, it's going to download to where we saw inside the container a moment ago, which like we said, it isn't the forward slash data which is mapped, it's forward slash downloads which isn't mapped anywhere. So that means if I download anything, it will download it into the file system of NCB get, which basically will be stored in our Docker image. 
And so that would start filling things up. So let's take a look at that. At the moment, 5.89 gigabytes are being used. So I'm going to download something on NZB Get. I'm going to download this Ubuntu collection here, which has a size of 18 gigs. But remember, this now is downloading into this path here, forward slash downloads, which is actually this folder here inside of the container. So let's wait till it's finished and we'll see what happens to the Docker image. OK, so the downloads finished now. So let's look at the Docker image. And yep, I've got all these warnings here telling me the Docker image is pretty much filled up. I'm using 23.7 out of the 25 gigs. So let's go back to the Docker tab now. And so it's all very well and good when we know which container is actually filling up the Docker image. But if you don't know which one it is, especially if you've got a lot of containers like I do on my main server here. So just how can we easily identify the culprit that's taking up all the space? Now, when we're on the Docker page, we can scroll down to the bottom and click here where it says container size. And it will tell us the size of all of the containers. But this isn't really helping us much because it's telling us the total size is 6.68 gigs. But we know from what we just did, we downloaded an 18 gig file into NZB get, but the actual use space in the Docker image is much more. The total space used is 23 gigs. So to really be able to analyze what's in this Docker image, I've made a script that will do that for us. So if you go into the description of this video, there'll be a link straight to here. Click onto this script here, then click onto raw, select all of the text and copy, then go to the Unraid server. Now you're going to have to have the user scripts plugin to be installed to run this. So once you've got that installed, go across to settings, click onto user scripts, add new script, give it a name, then click the script, go to edit script, delete this part out and then paste in what we copied onto the clipboard. Okay, so with that done, we can click onto save changes. And now I'm going to run this script. You can see here it says it's not removing orphaned images and it's not removing unconnected Docker volumes. We can set the script to automatically be able to do this, but by default it's set not to. OK, so when the script's finished, we can scroll up to the top and look through what it's found. So we can see here there's 12 images taking up 6.4 gigs and 12 containers taking up 119 megs. And we've got seven local volumes taking up 21.41 gigabytes. So this is obviously where all that data has been stored. And if we scroll down a bit here, the script will show us a list of the containers and their virtual size as well. So if we look at NZB get VPN here, we can see the size of the container is quite small. It's 168 megabytes. But also you can see here there's another size here, which says 203 bytes. Now this here is the writable layer in the container. Now a container is made up of various layers. Not all of them are writable. And that's why we have this virtual size here, which shows us the size of both the writable and just the read only layers in the container. So this is really the total size of what that container is. So if we scroll down here, the next thing the script shows us is a list of the containers in size order. And here's our NZB get VPN container here. So the last part of the script shows us the list of all the Docker volumes, what size they are and which container they're connected to. You may find you have some volumes that have a size of zero, but here we can see this volume here connected to NZB get VPN has a size of 15 gigs. So it looks like this is where the information has been dumped into this volume when I had it mapped incorrectly and it was going inside of the container. So we can easily see using this script exactly what inside the Docker image is taking up what space. So now you might be wondering how we actually get rid of this. Well, if I close this window now and I go back to the Docker tab, well, what happens if I actually remove the whole of this container? So I'm going to click onto it and click remove. I'm going to check this so it also removes the image as well. And I'm going to click onto yes, delete. So the container's removed. So now let's go back to the settings here and to Docker. Now we can see here that we've still got 21 gigs taken up. So I'm going to go back to settings and go back to user scripts. And I'm going to run the script again. And at the bottom of the script, we can see that volume's still there. But this volume's now orphaned. It's not connected to anything. So we're going to need to remove this. So to do that, I'm going to click on to done. I'm going to go back to the script here. I'm going to edit the script. And at the very top, we can remove orphaned images. 
Those are Docker images that aren't connected to containers anymore. And here we can also remove the unconnected volumes. So on these, I'm going to set them both to yes, just so it cleans up everything. And I'm going to save the changes. And now I'm going to run the script again. And there we can see it wasn't able to remove any orphaned images because there weren't any. So the total reclaim space is nothing. But it has reclaimed 21 gigs by removing these orphaned volumes. So now if I close the script, we can see here that the Docker image has returned to its normal level. So now all we'd need to do now is reinstall a container. And so for that, I go to the apps tab and I click onto previous apps here. And I'll scroll through my previous apps and check NZB get here, go down to the bottom and click on install one selected application. Okay, so that's done. So I'm going to go back to the Docker page, go back to NTB get VPN, and this time I'm going to make sure my path is set correctly, that it isn't set to forward slash downloads. I want it to be set to a location that's mapped, which is forward slash data. So now when my downloads go through, it's not going to fill up my Docker image and everything's going to be good. Right, so I guess that brings us to the end of this video. Now, as always, if you liked it, then please hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe to the channel. Now, as always, I really want to give a big, big thank you to all of my patrons and supporters. If it wasn't for you guys, I really wouldn't be able to make these videos. So I really, really appreciate your support. And if anyone watching would want to join that great bunch of people, then please see the links in the description below. Anyway, guys, it's getting late here, so it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in the next video.